Wild Bill's reputation demanded that he be exceedingly cautious. For instance, he never liked to sit with his back to the door. The vacant seat was so located, and a lively debate between Charlie Rich and Bill resulted in an attempt on Bill's part to get Charlie's chair. Charlie, get out of my chair! Well, I don't care how long you've been there. I sit there, you know it. Get out. Bill was not given his request what? and grudgingly, with great hesitation, took the empty chair. But after a few minutes, he stood up and again asked Charlie for his chair. Dang it, Charlie. I can't sit here. You know it. Now get out of that stinking chair Bill now. didn't win this argument either. And on this rare occasion, he settled down, sitting with his back to the door. Wariness, though, kept Bill alert, Charlie. for all knew him to be a left-handed drinker, leaving his right hand free to handle his pistol. As unpredictable as card games are, Bill found himself quickly losing to Massey, who had lost to Bill the night before. Bill asked Harry for $15 worth of pocket checks. Harry brought them over to Bill and returned to the bar and his duties. Soon, a shifty drifter known as Jack McCall entered the saloon. Bill quickly turned while drawing his gun. Recognizing McCall as a newcomer to town, he greeted him with a friendly, Howdy, Jack. Then reholstered his gun and resumed the game. Jack slowly circled the table, pausing briefly behind each player and analyzing each hand. Pay no mind, Ann, Get out of here. What are you trying to do? We're playing cards here. I know you ain't got any money. Wild Bill's attention was on Massey. There was a friendly argument between them, and Wild Bill remarked, Upon returning directly behind Wild Bill, suddenly Jack McCall, Take that, Jack, you! The bullet struck Bill on the back of the head, coming out of his left cheek, and lodged in Captain Massey's left arm. It was discovered soon after the cards Bill was holding were aces and eights, forever known as the dead man's hand. All fled the saloon except Carl Mann, who was held at bay by McCall. Jack snapped the trigger of his gun several times. It failed to fire. He then ran out the door and up the street. He was found hiding in a building behind a butcher shop. Later on in the day, he was tried in a minor's court. The jury, being tainted and influenced by a deceitful defense, found McCall not guilty, and he was released. This decision not only outraged the judge, but also the general populace. McCall left the camp in haste. Upon reaching supposed safety in Wyoming, he began bragging of his ignoble deed. Word of this reached a U.S. Marshal who tracked McCall down, arrested him, and sent him to Yankton to be tried again in Dakota Territory. It was determined, since the first trial was held in Indian Territory, that it was not legal. McCall was found guilty and hung for his cowardly crime. He was buried in an unmarked grave on the edge of town. Later, as the town grew, the cemetery was moved. As the coffins were opened, one corpse was found with a rope around its neck. It was easily identified as Jack McCall, the assassin of Wild Bill.